face to face. You're having an affair with a married man. I'm not proud of it. Why would you go do that to another woman? You don't have the right to destroy somebody's family. You sat there and said it's 50 percent the wife's fault. It's 50 percent the husband, 50 percent the other woman. And it gets personal. Look her in the eye. You had a family, and because he wanted to be with somebody else, you're in the ditch. My family was destroyed by the person I trusted the most in this world. She has said she would do it again. Then. Your husband is here. The day he found all the emails, he let my little boy read them to know his mother was a whore. A scorned husband weighs in. You guys all sound like you're the victim. You're not the victim. Are you still mad at her? Definitely. I still can't trust you. Why did you do it? Because I thought I could get away with it. I didn't feel you loved me anymore. That's an excuse. It's lying. It's deceiving. The bottom line is, it's cheating. And now, Inside the Mind of a Mistress continues. Now, before I bring out the scorned wives who've been listening backstage, let's first find out what these mistresses would say to their married men's wives if they had a chance to meet them. Take a look. If I was confronted by the married man's wife, I would give her examples of the things that he said to me, such as, I love you, I don't love my wife, I want to be with you, you are my dream. If his wife was meeting his needs at home sexually, I really doubt that he would be in my bed when he is. They're just there for the taking. She's allowing him to just run him up. What I wanted to say to the Barry man's wife was, obviously you're not taking care of him at home. You need to do what you gotta do, or he wouldn't be looking. So wake up, smell the coffee. In my particular situation, the wife is using the children as a buffer and um, the intimacy level has dropped off considerably. And Girl. that would be like saying her withholding intimacy is not right. Who are you to be grading some guy's wife's paper? Who, who not, are you to be passing judgment on her and what's going on? You don't know what happens behind closed you're doors. You're right, I don't. And it, it's not my concern. After spending many, many months after my marriage fell apart, figuring it all out, I was 50% responsible for my marriage falling apart, and my husband was 50% responsible. My married man's wife is the complete opposite of me. Complete opposite. So is, so is my married man. She's a lot older than him. I'm full life, bouncy. She's not. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm the total opposite. The and... I, and I don't know if that's what attracted him to me. Mm -hmm. Don't you worry that if you if he did leave mm -hmm. oh, and, and he went with you, mm -hmm. and okay, now you've got three kids, so every other weekend they're coming, or every, you know, blah 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 blah, all of that going on, and now you're sharing time, space, energy, money, efforts, all of that. Mm -hmm. Then how many times do you think you go out and get in the back seat? We probably how many have times time you would have that to... amazing kiss that just left you just tingling to your fingertips. I, I, I understand. That night that, you wanted to do it again when you got in the driveway, right? But mm -hmm. somebody else was there. Uh, well, no, my phone was just blowing up and it was my ex-husband wondering yeah. where I was at. So you were ready to go again. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's been, you know, definitely the sexual part of it, but it's been a lot emotional, too. But, yeah, and, and I know, and I've thought that through, you know, that, and, and there are times whenever I felt like he's been close to leaving, although I know now, you know, the pattern, the vicious cycle. I told my married man, I said, you know, the only way I feel like you're ever going to do anything is if you get caught, she kicks you out, and then what am I? The consolation prize. Uh-uh. Not going to be the consolation prize, but, you but, I'm, le consolation but I'm letting prize. myself be the side dish. You, you think you're the only affair he's had? He led me to believe that he had never been unfaithful ever in his in his marriage. Are, are you the only one in? Wait. Absolutely not. He told me how many affairs he had had. It, it still didn't register. Mm -mm. It didn't register. You think he you're was special, don't you? I do. I too. did. I thought it was special, and mm -hmm. I thought I was it. Mm -hmm. And even though he told me he had an affair for 10 years before that, and then a little brief one before that, and probably stragglers in between, but when you're in that moment, you don't think about that. You don't, you don't think about well, anything. What do you think about it now that we're talking about it in the bright light of day? I mean, um, that you're I was, the current That affair. I was a gullible son of a gun. That, that, that how I could lower myself to such a standard. And, and but she still went to a website looking for married men. And, and not think good of myself. 
because I didn't. But and you I mean, walked up on yours at a, with a 21-year-old, right? Yes, yes. So uh, you, you, you're under no delusion oh, that, no, that, you're, no. He's, that you're it, right? No, he's a, he's a playboy. You know, he has, I'm sure he has a, several women. That's why I'm, I rarely see him at this point. Did it bother you when you saw him with that 21-year-old? It was more embarrassing because I had one of my best friends with me. And, um, and it was on Valentine's Day. So, uh, so yeah, it was more embarrassing than anything. Are you the only one? I, um, I don't know. You're Fridays. Not every Friday. But you're on Fridays. It's yes. always Friday, right? Mm -hmm. So he could have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, or Sunday. You don't know. I don't know, but I think that he doesn't because he's, um, um, he's very married. involved with his, his kids. I'm going to fill those two chairs right now mm -hmm. with two wives okay. that have been cheated on okay. by women like yourselves. They're not the wives of your married men, mm -hmm. okay. but they are wives of married men who have been through this, and I want to hear their point of view. They've got questions for you, they've got comments. You can ask questions and comments, so let's bring them out. Okay. Coming up. What do you all think about what you've been watching? You sat there and said it's 50% the wife's fault. No, I, it's not. It's my other woman's fault. Yeah, it's 50% the husband, 50% the other woman. If you know he's married, hey, you're married. You're off limits. Get back. Tomorrow, the Dr. Phil family returns. Was that your truck that was just pulling away? No, it was not my truck. This is Alexandra's truck parked in front of the meth house. Did you go 68 days without seeing your children? I'm not going to answer that. It's a little hard to be self-righteous when you have three children and you have custody of none of them. I want you off the drugs. If you're not going to do this, I am done with you. Done. Then on Friday, a mother accused of extreme neglect. Your daughter drank bleach from a sippy cup. She's had a book bag with maggots and mold. I'm being the best mom that I can be. That's Friday. We now return to Inside the Mind of a Mistress. I thought my husband and I had a wonderful marriage. We were very happy for 16 years of our marriage, and then she appeared. I confronted my husband, and he denied it. He told me I was crazy, that there was nothing going on. He explained to me that they would get in her car, and they would have sex. To find out that he had this whole other life, this whole secret life, it sucked the life out of me. If I had the opportunity to come across this woman that ruined my family, I would punch her dead in the face. So let's bring them out. Let's add them to the mix here. Hi. Hi. Dr. Phil. Sue. Nice Sue. You. Hi. Dana. Dana, how are you? Good, how are you? You guys have been watching the entire show, right? Yep. From monitors backstage. Mm -hmm. What do you all think about what you've been watching? What you've been hearing? I mean, you, you sat there and said it's 50% the wife's fault. No, it's I, not. I, it's I, not I mean, in my other woman's so. fault. Yeah, it's 50% the, the husband, 50% the, 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 the other woman. Why would you go do that to another woman? I, I didn't go do it to another woman. No, but, I, but you're it, having an you're affair married, with a married man, right? I, I realize that. I realize I'm do, doing that to another woman. I, I, I'm not proud of it. If you know he's married, he's off limits, dude. Hey, you're married. You're off limits. Get back. Go away. We had a great marriage, and he threw it all away over a 25-year-old girl who doesn't even speak English. Well, and I've always worked with men, always worked with men. I get along better with men than women, and I have never, ever thought about cheating on my husband. Not every single marriage is, is a true, sacred, you know, respectable on both, both ends. And so this situation, no, what I'm saying is, some people have open marriages, so I'm, if, if, a woman allows her, her husband... His wife doesn't think she's in Well, if, if she... No, I think, I think she's not naive. But what, yeah. if he has an open marriage or not, do you want to be involved in no, that? No, I don't. That's why okay, I'm trying to Walk away. Just walk away. You don't... Right do you want to be the one that's screwing up their no, marriage? I mean, of course not. Now, you can dress it up with all the psychobabble you want. You can give it all of the spin that you want. But the bottom line is, it's cheating. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's cheating. It it's lying. Is, it's deceiving. Though. And it's all because it makes you feel good at the time. It makes you feel good at the time. And there's so much immaturity to say, you know what? This isn't right, but I don't care because I'm selfish and this is about me. And it feels good right now. So the hell with the kids. The hell with the wives. The hell with the husband. It feels good to me now. It's my turn. Screw them.
I mean, you dress it up what you want, but I mean, bottom line, it's not quite as noble as we're all describing it here. What do you have to say to these women? These are women that, based on results, would cheat with your husbands. When you first came on, I said, very pretty young girl. She obviously has it all together. And you started telling the story, and I said, she's being bought. She's being bought. And people who are bought that are women are considered hookers. From your perspective, do you think... Since I believe this is over between him and I, do you think, w would you want to know, would you want to call for me to let her know what her... I, I can guarantee you she knows. Yeah. I can guarantee but you she knows. And she's gotten how? those emails. You said nobody knows. Baloney. I got news for you. Everybody knows. They're everybody just not knows. telling you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They you... know. Do this for me. Just, I mean, just for me. Look her in the eye. Now... What was done to you? You're, you're saying that you had a family, you had a husband, you had kids, mm -hmm. and because he wanted to get because mm -hmm. he wanted to be with somebody else, now your whole family is financially disintegrating. You're in the ditch. Look at her and finish this sentence for me. You don't have the right. You don't have the right to destroy somebody's family and somebody's life. I have wonderful, wonderful kids that I would die for. But I also feel like I'm dying because of what happened. Because my family was destroyed by the person I trusted the most in this world. She has said she would do it again. She'll do another woman the same way you've been done. Coming up. All of you I see are making sort of excuses and lies. I'm not making excuses. You're going to have to quit being a second fiddle to some guy that is blowing smoke up your and telling you what you want to hear. And later. Your husband is here. Yes. I want him to join us. So why did you go do it? I am so angry, I can't see straight. I told you I hated you, and I do hate you. Dr. Phil, I know I'm failing. It can't continue the way that it is. Your daughter drank bleach from a sippy cup. She's had lice, she's had a book bag with maggots and mold. I'm being the best mom that I can be. I don't see that this baby gets any discipline. The baby is wild. The baby is 16 months. Gina is so determined to make her 16-year-old daughter a model that she has her doing chores in high heels. This is her dream, but I'm motivating her. You can't be serious. You bullied your cousin with Down syndrome and kicked her in the back? She is disgusting. Have you seen her? And for the first time ever on Dr. Phil. The triple intervention on three brothers. I understand that all you want to do is get out of this situation, but we're here to help. I accept it. Oh, there's nothing left to hold on to. Stand strong. I don't want you in my life anymore. Doesn't the legacy of anger have to stop? Now, in talking to you, I realize I need to be a hero for my daughter. This is going to be a changing day in your life. All this May on Dr. Phil. We now return to Inside the Mind of a Mistress. There's tons of disadvantages of being a mistress. I won't be able to have children with him. You can't even just pick up the phone and call them. Society sees that as wrong and the judgment that goes along with that. You see them in public. You can't walk up and grab their hand. I won't go old and die with him. You hurt a lot of people that you never intended to hurt. People just typically view mistresses as all being heartless, greedy vultures. Every mistress gets caught. This is Sarah Simons. Uh, you may have seen her on the show before. She is an author. Uh, she actually has a support group for mistresses. Uh, and can we refer to you as a former mistress? Big time, especially with your help. I'm still very much former. No more married men for me ever again. But that wasn't always your M.O. 
I know what goes on inside the mind of a mistress. Since my 20s and into my 30s, I was living as a mistress. I've had affairs with married men. Some of them were high profile, some of them were celebrities. When I found out that they were married, it didn't really bother me. I met a man who I fell completely in love with. He was very sweet to me, he made me feel so special. For such a busy guy, he always found so much time for me, and it was very intoxicating. He told me that he was unhappily married, um, he was planning to move out, he was sleeping in the spare room. It was a roller coaster ride for two and a half years, and it absolutely crucified me how it ended. It, it was so awful, I wanted to take my own life. As the other woman, you're cast aside. It's almost like you don't matter. He's stringing you along and lying to you. And then when it comes to an end, it's like you didn't matter. You were just used by him. When I was lucky enough to come on the show previously, Dr. Phil said something that really resonated with me. I have said chapter and verse, the man that makes the decision to violate the covenant and right. tell lies, it's that does not give you a free pass. Through being on the Dr. Phil show, I've really taken accountability for my actions. I had to help other women. I was compelled not only to have them live in the truth and realize that having an affair with a man who's married comes to nothing, but I didn't want them to go through the immense pain I was feeling. I'm determined not to let anybody treat me badly anymore. How did it end for you in such an ugly way that you got your heart broken? Because the man I was in love with, and I mean totally in love with, wanted a life with him and he professed to want the same with me. He didn't tell me his true situation in the beginning. Um, and during the course of our affair, which lasted for about two and a half years, I stupidly watched him sort of move to another home with his, with his wife and do all the things that married men do. And I kept making excuses for him and I, would, I was manipulated, you know, I was living a very toxic life just to try and get through the times till I would see him again. He was a very intelligent man. He was a lot older than me. He didn't have to lie to me. He was a con man, really. Um, and it took me to hit a wall of pain. And when I hit that wall of pain, I just knew I had to make some changes or probably I wouldn't even be here today, quite frankly. It was that bad for me. Why did you make the change? And I realized I really was just helping him in his marriage, unwittingly, because he would even say to me, Sarah, because of you, I'm able to be a better father and husband at home. And I was so far in denial at the time, I would think, you know, whilst I'm crying and drinking too much and just completely a mess, I would think, wow, I'm helping the man I love be a better father and husband. How cool is that? I never put my own thoughts first. I never put my own what I wanted first, so I just went through this transient lifestyle and now I'm 41 and I'm trying to have people, I want all women not to waste the same you know, 11 or 12 years living this kind of life that I did. You've been watching and seeing what's going on with these four women, having been in the same situation in one way or another, every situation is different, everything has a different element to it. Mm -hmm. Do these women need to get out? Oh my God, run, don't walk, run, get out, get out, get out. That's my message, please get out. I've said many, many times the difference between winners and losers mm -hmm. is winners do things losers just don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Winners do things losers just don't have the energy, the commitment to get up and do. Because you've got to make a decision. If I want what I want, i got to do what I have to do to get it. Now, if your marriage is dead and it's over, I'm sorry. I don't know if it is or it should be or if you did what you needed to do to earn your right to get out of it. But if it's over and you ever want to have a fully functioning life again, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to quit being a second fiddle to some guy that is blowing smoke up your and telling you what you want to hear and going home and telling her what she wants to hear. And that's exactly what Sarah's saying. Exactly. And all of you I see are making sort of excuses and lies, not only for him, but for your own behavior. I'm not making excuses. It just rots you to your core and you end up with nothing in the end. Coming up. Your husband is here. Yes. The day he found all the emails, he let my little boy read them to know his mother was a whore. You involved him in this. You used him. I felt deceived, felt cheated. He thought I was going to kill her. And later... You guys and, all and sound you know like what? you're the victim. You you're know not what? the victim. Now, you I can know you're all high and mighty because you left your first wife. You're no know better than anyone else. We now return to Inside the Mind of a Mistress. My wife had an affair. I felt deceived. I felt cheated. I felt used. Completely blindsided. I was checking my emails, and I clicked on my 
user screen and up popped a screen name that I didn't recognize. It happened to be my wife's emails to her lover. When I read that email, I was very, very angry. She had to see doctors. Come to find out that she wasn't doing that. She was actually going out on her rendezvous with her lover. She lied to me many, many, many times. I found out who the other man was by tricking my wife. She gave me the guy's name, went over there and talked to his wife and told him what was going on. And he came out and told me I had no right being there. My wife blamed me for breaking the two of them up. It was my fault that they didn't get a chance to say their goodbyes. What gives her the right to have a, a lover and say goodbye? To you know, it's very hard to trust someone after what she did. We don't make love. We argue constantly. My heart's still broken. No way I can take another pair. Your husband is here. 
Yes. I want him to join us. I want to talk to him in this group right now. Rich, Dr. Phil. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Good. Good to meet you. Have a seat. Thank you. Okay, I got a problem with this at many different levels, but we can talk about that in a minute to maybe kind of create a bit of a to-do list. Why are you still with her when she's done what she's done? I still love her. She's my wife. I've been with her for 16 years, known her for 17 years. She's the mother of my child, and I still love her. And I still want this marriage to work. You do want it to work. Yes, I do. Do you want it to work because she started slipping away? Or do you want it to work because you really love her? Because sometimes men can be like a dog with a bone. It's like the bone can lay in the backyard and the dog doesn't even look at it till another dog comes in and pays attention to it. And now the dog's willing to fight to the death to protect that bone. Uh, because she says that the fire had gone out in this marriage, that you spent so much time belittling her and putting her down that it didn't sound very loving. Did that change? Did you get a wake-up call by what she did, or is she just saying that to justify her bad choices? That's an excuse. I, I don't know where the fire went to. If the fire went away, it's not just my fault. It's She's part of the marriage, too. Mm -hmm. If she had to go somewhere else and find something else, then it's, uh, it's a two-way street. You know, I don't know why she said the fire went out. You cheated with her. I cheated when I first met her. I was married for 22 years to my first wife. And I met her uh, at my job, and we got to know each other, and we had an affair. But I left my first wife. I didn't stick around and have her as a mistress. I left my first wife because I was in love with her. Mm -hmm. So I got out of that marriage. I left a 13-year-old daughter that hated me for years after that. Mm -hmm. But she's come around now, and she understands what happened in my first marriage. Mm -hmm. But my son, I don't think, is ever going to understand what she did. The day he found all the emails, he let my little boy read them to know his mother was a whore. My son was standing behind me when I was sitting at the desk crying, reading the emails. I told him, I said, Mom's been seeing another man. And my son got very, very, very angry. He actually took my wife's clothes out of her closet and threw them down the stairs. My husband had no right to tell our son about any of this. I've never despised a man more than I despised him after he did that to my son. I hate him. Did you do the right thing in letting him read those emails and know what had happened here? I don't know if it was the right thing or not, but uh, I was angry at the time and I wanted somebody to get back at her. So I said, you know, read the emails. Here's what your mother did. Your mother's been sleeping around with some guy. So you said you were very prideful in that tape, it seemed to me, when you said that he was so upset that he threw her clothes out. He was, he was very, very angry. He and you were glad clothes. that he was. I was glad. I was glad he threw her clothes down the stairs and threw her suitcase down there and told her not to come home. And very, he was angry. We were both angry. I've been doing this a long time, and I have two rules that I really try to adhere to when dealing with kids, particularly in these kind of situations. Number one, you never ask a child to be involved in adult issues mm -hmm. and you never get a child involved in something over which they have absolutely no control because that is a helpless feeling for a child and they are not equipped mentally emotionally uh, physiologically even neurologically to deal with adult issues they're not and you victimized him both of you have. You victimized him by what you did and the bad choices you made. Yes, I did. And when you involved him in this, you used him. Yeah. You used him to bolster your feelings. I used him to get back at her. At her. And that's a, that's a, that's a terrible exploitation of a child. And you both owe this young man a sincere apology. You know, there are two different levels of issues in this situation. One is the infidelity. You have absolutely no credibility whatsoever. There's no justification for you going out and having an affair like this. This is wrong. You may have very legitimate complaints about this guy on the marital front, yeah. but what you've done is an illegitimate response to what may be legitimate complaints. If you've got legitimate complaints with him, then deal with it. That's, wh that's what he had told me. If you would have just came and talked to me, if you would have told me how you felt <clears throat> but I 
but at the time that I did this, I didn't think he even loved me. I didn't even think he cared about me. Well, that was then. This is now. I yeah. can't tell you. And you, you never you, came and talked to me. Never came and <clears throat> talked to me. Never said a word. Nope. Are you still mad at her? Definitely. Still angry. I still can't trust her. Well, I want to know why got, around did it. We got distant. Um, we barely talk. Um, how, how do you answer that question? Let's just ask a question. Why did you do it? Have you, have you answered that question to him? Because I didn't feel you loved me anymore. That's an excuse. You went no, out because you had a lot, a lot of good times. You had fun. He could treat you nice. He took you places that I couldn't do that because I didn't have a job. I didn't have the money. So I couldn't do the things that he could do. He had a good job. He has a nice home. <laughs> he can go places and hide it all. So why did you go do it? Coming up. I walk by my husband butt naked, and he doesn't even realize I'm walking by him, for Christ's sakes. I'm here in, in thongs and panties. Hello. Plus. This one's getting paid for whatever. I'm I don't know. I'm not getting paid You're getting for paid. whatever. You're getting paid. We now return to Inside the Mind of a Mistress. My wife had an affair. It's very hard to trust someone after what she did. My heart's still broken. No way I could take another affair. You went out because you had a lot, a lot of good times. You had fun. He could treat you nice. He took you places that I couldn't do that because I didn't have a job. I didn't have the money. So I couldn't do the things that he could do. He had a good job. He has a nice home. <laughs> he can go places and hide it all. So why did you go do it? I guess I thought I could get away with it. She wanted to be married, but she wanted to have the single life. That's what she wanted. She wanted to have fun. Which is usually the flip side, isn't it? And you're all the no same. You all want to have fun. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for the excitement out there. This one's getting paid for whatever. I'm I don't know. You're getting paid. You're getting for paid. Whatever. You're getting paid. I'm, number one, I'm He's not married. Her a I'm not, I'm not married. Number one. So what okay? are you doing? The and other guy is married, though. That's his. That's his thing. That's what I just said to Doctor Phil when I first sat down. If you were listening, I'm trying to distance myself completely from that. I know it's wrong. But you okay? still take the money. I have a conscience. You still take the money. When I, if he wants to give it, I was taking the money. I still have my own money. The little he gives me, I make a lot more than that on my own. My ex-husband did the same thing. Showed my ten-year-old son uh, text messages, all that, just to totally. Well, why did he show? Because he was because your ex-husband was angry. Because he was because angry, he's an right? Idiot. Because he that's found why. out about what because you were doing. Because he's an immature idiot, and that's why I divorced him. Yeah. Well, that See, was I like basically. a spur of the moment thing See, I that I did that, and I'm sorry I did that. That is completely. And you guys and, all and sound you like what? you're the victim. You you're not what? the victim. I know what? Well, my kids. Acknowledge me. You know, there was a point in our marriage that I walked by my husband butt naked and he doesn't even realize I'm walking by him, for Christ's sakes. You know, and it's like, hello, I'm here in, in thongs and panties, hello. And he didn't even acknowledge I was there. I just want to feel wanted, needed. That's what I want. You understand 
that what you did to get that was wrong. It is right? dead do wrong. Do you get that? Yes, I do get that. You understand that? And, yes. And, it, and you can go do that again, but you're just on self-destruct if you do. I'm on meltdown if I do that again because I can't do that to my little boy. If you want out of the marriage, you earn your way out of it, and you do that by turning over every stone looking for solutions. And you know when you're through, when you're ready to get divorced, when you have no unfinished emotional business. And you two have lots of unfinished emotional business. You're not ready to get a divorce yet. You haven't done the work. Do you miss him? Yes, I do. Have you ever told him that you miss the man that he was? Yes, I have. And what does he say? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm the same person, but he's not. We used to have a good connection. And I don't know where it got lost. Do you want it? I want it. I want my family back. Do you want it? Yes, I do. And I want it with my son. I want us to be a family. You're the one that made the bad choice. Absolutely. You're the one that ran this off in the ditch, yes. okay? Mm -hmm. And you know how long you work on it? You work on it until. You don't work on it a week. You don't work on it a month. You work on it until. Until it's fixed. You work on it until you get it out of the ditch and back up on the road. And you do that by becoming totally transparent. That's how you learn to trust her again. Because, because at that point, you begin to build a new history. You didn't cheat on him yesterday. That's one day. You didn't cheat on him tomorrow. That's two days. Pretty soon you have a history that predicts a future that you can live with. And you have the integrity to say, Rich, I will never, ever cheat on you again. If I want out, I will come to you and tell you I want out, but I will not sneak out. I will walk out the front door with my head held high and everything in my hands, but I will not go out the back door to meet somebody else. You owe that to him. And you, you got to make a decision. Because of what she has done, that is not a license for you to be abusive with her. That is not a license. And you can be verbally abusive. You can be physically abusive. You can be emotionally abusive. That is not a license for you to become uh, abusive with her and cut her and belittle her and demean her at every turn. If you're going to do that, then you need to walk out the door. This is not a life sentence. People can kill people and not get a life sentence. Mm -hmm. I will get you some marital counseling that will help you reconstruct this on a day-to-day -day basis. We, I will provide that to you, and we will do that if you would like. You don't have to, but I'll make it available to you if you want to do it. Yes, please. What are you going to do with your man? I'm... That's it. It's over. <laughs> you don't want this... You don't want what they going through here. But now it's making me wonder, you know, if I did the right thing. You need to call him and tell him it's done. You need to say, look, if you call me, let's be sure we're clear that we both know you're using me and you've put your interest ahead of my own. That you, you got to put him on notice. You need to do it. Mm -hmm. You should call him from here before you leave. I'll give you your phone. <laughs> I'll give you a place to sit and you can call him. <laughs> And, I mean, leave here starting oh, fresh. Oh, I don't have his number because uh, the, the phone number... Of course number... you don't. No, 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 I'm telling you. He won't give me his cell phone number. It's the cell phone number, cell phone that I provided him so that he wouldn't get caught through his oh, wife. Oh, so now you're protecting him oh, and helping him cheat. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll call that number and hopefully yeah, I'll get the voicemail. You can at least leave the message. Right. You can at least leave the message. You don't have any intention of changing your relationship, do you? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I mean, this isn't what I want. Um, I would like to have somebody. I don't want somebody full time. I'm not ready to sacrifice my time with my kids right now, but I would like somebody that is mine. Well, there's been a lot to talk about, a lot to think about here today. Um, and I want to hear from y'all. I want to know what you've done with this. Don't you cheat yourself. Right. Don't do it. You're too good for that. Find out what happened with the mistresses and their married men after the show. We now return to Inside the Mind of a Mistress. I feel like we really drilled down today with the mistresses, but I wonder if after leaving my stage, anything really resonated with them. Let's see what happened once they left the studio. 
When Dr. Phil said I'm better than that, I definitely, I knew that, you know, which is another reason why I've been putting that distance up with the married man. Hi, it's my first day back from my Dr. Phil appearance, and it's been interesting. I did make a conscious decision to cut things off completely with my married man. So I did send him a text message, and I said, um, if you do care about what's best for me, then please let's permanently leave this alone so that I can be with a man who is fully available for me. I know what my fault is. I know what it is. I know that that I'm 100% responsible for my actions, and I understand that society and even me would say that my actions are wrong. I understand that, but I'm not a changed woman. I know that I'm either going to get my heart broken or I am going to find somebody that I want to give my time to. Right now, I haven't found him. When Dr. Phil said that women that have affairs are selfish, only think about themselves and don't care about their kids, I can partially agree with that because I have put my children aside when this affair started. I dropped them down a notch and put the married man above them. I feel that I've learned a lot since the Dr. Phil show, but I, I'm still stuck and um, haven't gotten completely to a point where I'm free of it. I am excited to go from this day forward with my husband because when we walked off that set today, he looked at me like he hadn't looked at me in, in years. And I knew there was a little hope there that maybe we could make this work a little bit, that we'd both be on the same page going forward. I am just checking in. We've attended four counseling sessions and we seem to be a lot better than we were before we were at the show. Uh, we're doing a lot of things together, we're talking, we're sharing. So things are looking up. It's a lot brighter picture than it was before we went on the show. So again, thank you. Thank you for all your help. I want to thank all of my guests for being here today. If this topic strikes a chord with you or someone you know, I want to hear from you. You can go to DrPhil.com right now and tell me your story. And if you're watching today and you're a woman involved with a married man, you need to get out and get out now. I'm sure he's making you lots of promises, but trust me, you're probably being told exactly what you want to hear with no real future. And let's say he does leave his wife to be with you. Remember this, if he'll do it with you, he'll do it to you. I mean, come on, you don't want to be in a relationship that begins with deception and every time you don't know where he is, every time you don't know what's going on, you're wondering, is he doing with someone else what he did with me? That is no way to live and these relationships are doomed because they're based on a lack of trust. They're based on deception and they are based on some fantasy that you know is not real. If you're in that situation, find the door. Get back to your life so you know that you have some future. We'll see you next time. The main warning signs that a man might be married are things like him paying for dinners and drinks in cash. Look for things like him having two cell phones.